How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're diving into something truly exciting. Something that created a lot of buzz online, and something that was just announced by NASA only a few hours ago from when I'm making this video. Because this time, a team at NASA just made an announcement and released a new study, possibly showing us the clearest signs of past life on Mars. But obviously before you start picturing some kind of a complex organism, or even green men, let's slow down a little bit and discuss exactly what was discovered and exactly what this means. But most importantly, we're going to focus on facts, avoid any hype and any over-exaggerations, because scientists have made this mistake before and made a premature announcement about Martian life which turned out to be not true. And so let's talk about this new study and the new announcement in a bit more detail, but let's start with where exactly this is coming from and where all of this was discovered. And this is of course coming from the NASA's Perseverance. For several years, this rover has been moving across the Jezero crater in order to collect several samples and in order to possibly find life. And here this crater was chosen specifically for one reason. Researchers believe that this used to be some kind of an ancient lake, and also very likely contained a river delta, both of which are environments considered to be prime targets in a search for extraterrestrial life. And so if life existed on Mars at all, it would most likely exist in some kind of a Martian riverbed. And last year, in 2024, we've discussed this particular rock. Here Perseverance discovered a very unusual rock referred to as Cheyava Falls. And it actually stood out because of these somewhat bizarre markings. They were referred to as the leopard spots. With the initial scans revealing that it seemed to contain organic compounds that might have come from some kind of ancient life. Or at least showed us that there were clear evidence of liquid water in the past, and so life did have conditions necessary to exist. And it also contained these flecks or these unusual spots of iron and phosphates from various chemical reactions that though could have been just chemical in nature, could also have been produced by ancient microbes that possibly used this for energy. And we've talked about this in a lot of detail in that previous video last year that should be somewhere in the description. But now we have this very recent study that you can find in the description as well from Joel Hurwitz and the team you see right here. Actually, the team here is much larger, so there you go. And this is a really interesting study. Now, first of all, this is really good science. There are no speculations here. There are absolutely no assumptions based on some kind of a preconception. And most importantly, this whole study is based on a null hypothesis. In essence, they're trying to prove that whatever they discovered is not life. But at the end of the study, the conclusion is that they're actually unable to do so. They don't have an explanation for what was discovered if it was not produced by life. But here, let's actually discuss the details first. And this is coming from a different rock sample from nearby sites called Sapphire Canyon and Masonic Temple. I'm actually kind of curious who even comes up with these names, because a lot of them are super bizarre. But you can see some of these locations on this map. And so here, once again, the samples were collected by Perseverance and were then analyzed and pictured. Although in this case, the analysis was not as complex as what we could achieve right here on planet Earth. And well, it turns out that these samples contain minerals like vivianite, which usually contains iron phosphate, and greigite, which contains iron sulfides. But what's really key here is how these minerals were arranged. Because on Earth, we usually see very similar arrangements in water sediments where microbes are physically eating organic matter and then breathing out rust and sulfates. This is usually referred to as redox cycling. And so the presence and distribution of these minerals in the Martian rocks potentially suggests similar biological processes that might have happened here before. And one of the scientists from the study, Michael Theis, essentially describes this as something that would be very easy to explain if there was life, but something that would be extremely difficult to explain if it wasn't. So if this was just a chemical or geological processes, it would be super difficult to explain. And this is particularly true because abiotic processes, or the ones that are just chemical or geological, can only reduce sulfates and sulfides extremely slowly and usually requiring temperatures of 150 to 200 degrees Celsius and also a lot of acidity. But based on some of the previous research and based on the analysis of other rocks, these conditions were unlikely to exist in this location because there's no other signs of any kind of exposure. And so because there's just a lack of explanation for how this could be produced geologically or chemically, in this case this basically invalidates that null hypothesis, implying that this could have been produced by actual life. And that's a pretty strong statement coming from NASA. Especially because a lot of this was discovered in some of the youngest sedimentary rocks, suggesting that Mars might have been habitable much longer than we previously thought. 
and of course suggested, and this is a super exciting discovery, assuming of course it's true. And so here we have to discuss something else that's very relevant to all of this. This is not the first time we've been excited about potential life on Mars, and not the first time such a discovery has been announced with so much fanfare. And here our fascination with life on Mars goes way back even to the 19th century. And this is when astronomers mistakenly thought that they're actually seeing canals on Mars, leading to wild speculations about intelligent life, Martian life, constructing all of these canals. But this was also partially the so-called zeitgeist, the spirit of the time. Around the same time, a lot of canals, such as the Suez Canal, were also being constructed, and so here it would not be unusual to kind of assume that maybe something similar was happening elsewhere. And just as a slight side note, this also kind of reminds me how in the 60s and the 70s, the SETI program started to look for radio communication from extraterrestrial intelligence, just because we kind of started using this ourselves and thought that maybe someone else is doing that as well. So it's always zeitgeist, the spirit of time. But not only were these not real, they were most likely just a result of atmospheric illusions. Then, in the 1970s, we had the Viking missions. The lenders that performed actual experiments on the Martian surface, and whose purpose was to try to find microbial life. And one of the experiments, called labeled release, potentially gave positive results. Results suggesting some kind of a microbial metabolism. And though this was super exciting, other instruments provided negative results, with scientists later learning that perchlorates in Martian soil, discovered by the Phoenix lander in 2008, could have destroyed organic compounds when heated, complicating the results from Viking. And though some scientists still believe that this was maybe a discovery of life, but we just kind of basically killed it, at the moment all of this is very inconclusive. We've discussed this in some of the previous videos in the description. But then we have this. This was the biggest moment in history. The little tiny warm looking thing that officially kicked off the field of astrobiology for many of us, including myself. And this was the announcement from 1996. The discovery that came from this asteroid that we know came from Mars, with this very strange structure resembling a living organism, discovered inside. And it was actually this guy that officially made the announcement in 1997, exciting a lot of scientists and a lot of people. But around the same time, when I started studying all of this, luckily or unluckily, I also got involved in this, but under a professor that was trying to prove this kind of incorrect. Because he believed that this chunk of rock found in Antarctica in 1984 and that was confirmed to be from Mars, essentially contained a lot of biochemical mimics. And so even though the NASA scientists led by David McKay announced that they discovered signs of life, and specifically these microscopic fossils of bacteria, with the formal announcement being made by Bill Clinton, these claims not only were controversial, turned out to be incorrect. First of all, all of this was ridiculously small. This was approximately 20 to 100 nanometers in size. And that's much, much smaller than anything known to us, and would basically be some kind of a virus. And we know that viruses do not leave fossils. Moreover, scientists soon discovered that very similar shapes, as a matter of fact, almost exact same shapes, could also be created by non-biological chemical reactions, with all this later being recreated in a lab. And so even though this contained magnetite, which back then was believed to be a strong biosignature, later on that professor I used to work for, along with several other teams, were able to physically prove that this was not true. Very similar magnetite formations were then physically created through inorganic processes, and no life was needed at all. And all of the other organic compounds that were discovered alongside this turned out to be just contamination from Antarctica. As a matter of fact, several amino acids that were initially used to prove this turned out to be terrestrial contamination from the Antarctic ice. And extremely recently, in 2022, we've actually discussed one of the most groundbreaking studies in regards to this rock, where the scientists at the Carnegie Institution of Science definitively concluded that all of this was likely formed by geochemical interactions between water and rock. The process is referred to as serpentinization. And this is basically where igneous rocks react with water and then end up producing textures very similar to a snake's skin. And also produce these very bizarre features that sort of resemble life, but are definitely just geological and chemical reactions. And so while ALH84001 was a monumental turning point for astrobiology, as a matter of fact this rock kickstarted astrobiology, over time the scientific consensus was that the features here were not proof of Martian life at all, just proof of very complex geochemical reactions. And so what does the story from this particular meteorite tell us about the announcement that was just made by NASA? Well, it of course tells us to be super cautious and once again to be scientifically rigorous. 
And honestly, I think this study right here does a pretty good job at that as well. But it still means we need more studies. Right now, NASA is calling this potential biosignatures. Here, the emphasis is on potential. This might be biological in nature, but it also might be, once again, some kind of a reaction that has not been explored yet. And so while the evidence from perseverance right now is pretty strong, mostly because the observed conditions don't easily fit non-biological explanations, like for example high temperature or acidity, because the rover's instruments do not have enough capability to analyze these rocks more, we're not going to have an actual conclusion for a very long time. And so, as Katie Stack Morgan, the Perseverance Project scientist, stated, right now, abiotic explanations for what we see in these rocks are less likely, but we still cannot rule them out, even based on the paper's findings. Which is why we need that other mission, the Mars Sample Return. The mission that was supposed to happen, but then ran into the funding trouble, and at this point, we don't really know what's going to happen. The original plan was for this to happen in 2032, but at the moment, as far as I know, it's been postponed indefinitely. And so the plan to bring these samples back to Earth, in order to analyze them in our labs, is unfortunately currently uncertain. And honestly, at this point, I think maybe China should just go in and grab these samples and bring them back because at least we'll have something. But the reality is that these missions are super expensive and currently the funding has been cut and so we don't know if it's going to happen. As a matter of fact, there's even talk about possibly canceling everything, meaning that all of these samples are just going to be collecting dust on Mars until someone in the future goes and picks them up or until Mars gets destroyed by the sun. Although in this case, even that is not certain. It might survive. But in conclusion, what does all of this mean in the grand scheme of things? Well, first, this reinforces this very important idea that ancient Mars could have been habitable. And so it didn't just have liquid water, it possibly had all of the necessary conditions for life to exist. And so this latest discovery suggests that these habitable conditions might have lasted much longer than we initially thought, because in this case, this is coming from one of the youngest samples so far. At the same time, if these biosignatures are confirmed, it would have profound implications on life existing elsewhere in the universe. It would basically suggest that developing life on different planets may not be as difficult after all. And so if life arose independently on two different planets in a single star system, it may suggest that life is not rare, it may also suggest that the rare Earth hypothesis is possibly incorrect, and suggest that life exists in a lot of different places, including several places right here in the solar system. But there is also this idea of panspermia. Maybe life started on Mars and then got transported to Earth, or I guess vice versa. And so maybe what we're seeing here are two different cousins that eventually ended up on two different planets. Which of course would imply that we're basically Martians. And if that's the case, it would also show us that life is very robust and can travel far distances across space, which once again would suggest that maybe life did spread across a lot of different locations, and once again we might be able to find it in many places. And finally, this idea also brings up the very important Great Filter Hypothesis. And so if the simple microbial life is common, why don't we actually see intelligent complex life as well? And so is there some kind of a filter that's stopping everything? And is there something really major basically preventing life from becoming super advanced? And if so, what is it? And so by confirming microbial life on Mars, we would now have to answer this new question. Either way, we're definitely on the edge of a groundbreaking discovery that also reminds us of the power of science. Because here, the persistence of these robotic explorers and the persistence of scientific teams at NASA is the only reason this has even been possible. But here, the journey to confirm the life outside of planet Earth is definitely going to be a long one. Even though we have these tantalizing clues and a lot of hints here and there, we still have to be very cautious. And that's because, once again, we've made this mistake before. And so, until we actually know what's going on here, and until future discoveries, or possibly some other research that manages to recreate all of this using just chemical and geologic means, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. We'll come back and discuss this more in some of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly, or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access and a few more additional secret videos. Or you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt that contains some of the Martian designs in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.